welcome back to the Toowoomba Forward. My name is Tim Whistle, and uh, joining me right now is candidate for Toowoomba Regional Council, Paul Wilson. Paul, thank you for being here on the show. Thank you, Tim. Thank, thank you, you so much. Um, if you wanted to start by introducing yourself, um, please tell us about the qualities that you possess uh, that, that you believe will make you an effective councillor for the next four years. Sure. So I, I was born and bred here in Toowoomba, um, and I was basically, um, I have uh, been part of the community basically since I was 14 basically. I started the, uh, I started a fundraiser for a kid that needed a cochlear when I was 14 years old and that was my first step of becoming part of our community. Um, at the age of 18 I was on the board of the Toowoomba Carnival Flowers Corporation and co-coordinator of Garden Fest which was a huge garden uh, expo back in the day. Um, and then I went on to uh, to be part of lots of other boards and committees and you know things like that in Toowoomba. Um, I have experience um, at a federal level. I was a, a board member on the Down Syndrome Australia board and the Down Syndrome Queensland board. So I've got governance experience, I've got experience. Um, effectively, that's what a councillor is. They're a board member, right? On, on a very large board, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> overseeing a very large budget. But, sure. but, but, but the concept is the same. Sure. You yeah. know? Um, and I think, you know, I love, I love this community, always have. Uh, and, and I feel as though um, it, it was time for me to then go, righto, I'm going to put my hand up for Take that step. the council. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Thank you for that. Um, the campaign slogan on your core flute reads, the local you know. Yeah. Um, some might see that as a bit of a bold statement if, if you're putting that across the entire Toowoomba region. Mm -hmm. um, what do you mean by that? And what are you doing in this campaign to make yourself known enough to electors to cross that 31,000 vote threshold? That's not a lot when you say it quickly. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, Tim, look, you know, um, people that will drive past my core float and go, yeah, I do know him. Or others will be like, mm, I've seen him somewhere. <laughs> and others will be like, I have no idea who he is. Yes. But the point of that slogan is that they might go, how am I supposed to know this guy? And then they go and do some research. Hmm. Um, you know, you've got to catch the eye in, in a split second when they're driving past your sign. Yeah. Um, that's why the background is dark, the colours are bright, and my name is big. Um, hopefully that when they go to the, to, the, to the polling booth, they look down the list and they go, oh, Wilson, I remember that name. Um, so that's why, really, mm. that slogan was used. Mm. Oh, great. Thank you for that. Um, what do you think is the biggest council-related issue that locals are concerned about? You've been campaigning now for a few weeks. Um, in those conversations that you've been having with people, what are they saying and what are you hoping to accomplish to, to solve that issue? So lots of, lots of things. Um, but one, of the, one of the main things that I'm hearing is lack of consultation. Um, I literally just came from uh, a local business down in the main CBD and I was talking to her around what issues she has. Um, she has issues with parking. Uh, that's been an ongoing saga for how many years? Someone's got to do something about it and they've got to fix it. The current process is really quite difficult. Um, if you're a tourist, you have no idea. You, you think, park your car, off you go, you get a ticket. Okay. You know, um, The council said that they're going to make what, six to $800,000 a year out of it. Is that out of parking or is that out of parking fines? We don't know that. Um, the other issue I'm finding is that the smaller communities are feeling as though they're being neglected. So one of the <clears throat> one of the things I'm running on is um, is uh, is creating a ward system, so that there is a candidate in the in the remote parts of this community uh, that can be true representation of that community, um, and I understand why councillors don't want that, and that's because a majority of them live in the same suburb and they know they're going to lose their job. If I lose my job after my first term, but I've implemented the ward system and the people in the community are being supported, I'm cool with that. Yeah, great. That's uh, yeah, bold stance, but I like it. I think it's a good way to um, to get that attention, I suppose. Um, in your candidacy announcement post, you highlighted the need to remove TRC from the South East Queensland Council of Mayors, yeah. um, stating what has Brisbane ever done for us? Yeah. If you were to successfully remove Toowoomba Regional Council from the Council of Mayors, um, how would you? promote cohesion between local councils and, in, and ensure infrastructure projects such as the fast rail to Brisbane um, is negotiated well and to our advantage? Well that has to be done um, at all levels of government. Mm -hmm. um, I, d I don't know that being a member of the South East Queensland Mayors is going to help that to be honest because at the end of the day you know they want to build they want to increase the capacity of this this stadium to 15,000. Um, you know if, 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 if our involvement in that organisation was successful they would look at that and go, that's a ridiculous call because 
where's the parking? Where's the public transport? It, there is none. And for them to go, oh, yeah, but, but we want to make sure that we're part of the Olympics, great, well, let's come up with an alternative. Let's not just go, oh, let's, let's pull down a 120-year-old bowls club that's full of great members. That, that's a legacy in itself. Yeah. You know, yep, the Olympic Games is going to be a legacy, but the bowls club is already a legacy in this community. Mm. Um, so I think, you know, we have to have a good working relationship with our, our state members of parliament and our federal members of parliament. That's how we get stuff done by having a good relationship with those people. Yeah, thank you for that. Housing affordability and availability of homes um, yeah. to, to rent even or to purchase um, is a major issue that residents are concerned about. Yeah. As you said, there's, it, it, it's one of those issues similar to the, um, the, the upgrades to the stadium mm. that require all levels of government to participate and, and come to a good solution. But what role do you think council has to play in the process of making more houses available um, and in principle, do you support something like high density living in the Toowoomba CBD? In principle, uh, again, it comes down to everything that I've just already been talking about, car parking, you know, all of that sort of stuff, you know. But for me, I, I think what we need to do as a council is cut red tape. Developers find it difficult to do business here, you know, like the bureaucrats within council will look at a development application and they'll go tick, 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 yep, meets all of the development requirements. Then it goes to council and council go, no, nah, we're going to vote that down. So then what happens is the developer takes it to court, the court looks at it and goes, oh, it's ticked all the boxes, we'll approve that. But meanwhile, it's cost tax ratepayers a ton of money in court. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So for me, if we make it easier to do business with us, then developers are going to want to do business with us and then there's going to be more houses built. Yeah, great. Thank you for that. Um, sustainability and responsibly managing our environment is top of mind for many Toowoomba region residents. Um, what are your convictions in regards to the topic of climate change and whether or not council has a role to play in it? Look, I, I think, you know, when it comes to things like climate change and, and the environment, that, that, that forms part of the develop, development applications nowadays. And so we, we have a role to play to make sure that you know, that what, what we are doing ticks all the boxes and doesn't ruin the environment. I'm, I'm pro-development, but I also understand that we have to support, you know, we have to look after our environment. I'm, I'd never support the, you know, the culling of trees where there's hundreds of koalas living and, you know, things like that. But I, oh, I would also take advice from a specialist. I'm not a specialist in that area. So um, if, if, you know, if a, uh, uh, an environmentalist uh, says X, Y, Z, well, then I, I need to understand that they're the specialist, I'm not. Okay, thank you. Um, just to follow up to that, in principle, do you support the use of travel restrictions on Toowoomba region residents um, as a means to reduce carbon emissions? For example, limiting the, a resident's ability to travel outside their suburb? No. No, thank you. Crime across the Toowoomba region has skyrocketed. Um, while council has no say in the management um, of the Queensland police force and cannot legislate fines or prison time or whatever, yeah. um, there has been a history of collaboration between the Toowoomba Regional Council with the local police force um, and even to a state level. So in your view, what do you think Toowoomba Regional Council can do to ensure that the Toowoomba region is still a safe city? Well, again, we need to work with our state members of parliament and, and sometimes our federal, depending on the, on the legal situation. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, we have lost over 300 police, and not, not, not Toowoomba, but Queensland has lost over 300 police in the last 18 months. Yeah. Crime has risen by over 100%. So whatever they're doing, it's not working. Um, the police aren't empowered because they, 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 um, they arrest these, these people and then the courts let them go. And why do the courts let them go? Because the laws have changed that says they can't actually lock up a child that's 14 years old. Or as, well, that's actually as a last resort. So of course the judges have got to find everything that's possible, as a, a, and only lock them up as a last resort. Now I'm I'm not I'm not saying that kids need to be locked up. Um, early intervention is so important. I was at a crime forum the other night, um, run by a federal member. Sadly, uh, there was only myself and Alyssa Parker in the room that I saw. If there was others, I apologise. But th but there was only a couple of candidates in the room, and I think that 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 showed that 
they don't understand. Look, I understand that it's, it's a three-level government situation, right? So I, I need to be on top of what's going on at the state level so that I can make decisions at a local level. Um, so I feel as though, for me, the police need to be empowered and the laws need to be changed in regards to, uh, in regards to these um, particular youth offenders. Yeah, sure. Um, so on a, on a council level, because obviously you can't um, do anything in regards to increasing the powers of, of the police force or um, imposing all those things, yep. uh, what can council contribute? What can council contribute? Um, well, they can contribute in regards to the CCTV, um, obviously data. I mean, I'm not sure what other level or what other things that council can do, obviously, because I'm not in council, but, but they can certainly contribute by being there and being able to assist them in any way that they require assistance to, to try and tackle the problem. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the CCTV question, because as a follow-up, um, would you support setting up CCTV cameras in residential suburbs and streets? Well, that's a hard one. Look, I, I, I do in principle, yeah. only because it, it, can, it can help tackle crime. Mm. But at the same time, you don't want to take away the rights of an individual. Yeah. Now, I know there are cameras all through CBD, and it's a shame that our society is like that, that we have to do that. And, but, I, but I also understand that the individual's rights need to be protected. So it's, 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 a, really challenging, it's a really challenging situation, that one. Yeah. Um, so I would need to see all the information, all the data, and make sure that there's plenty of consultation with the people in those areas to make sure um, that, well, they're probably not going to be comfortable with it, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> but having said that, you know, how many houses have now got CCTV on the front yeah. of the house pointing out to the street? Mm. Uh, and they have been vital in solving crimes. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very fascinating, fascinating balance to strike, isn't it? Because mm. in, at least in my view, I think if you put a camera um, with consent of your own on front, in, front of, in front of your house, it's very different to having a government put a camera in front of your house. True that. You know, so yeah. I appreciate your, your heart behind wanting to strike the balance between that personal freedom and, and security. Um, so as the Toowoomba region moves forward, and we touched on this briefly, um, Residents are concerned about the fact that our rich traditions might be sacrificed at the altar of bold ambitions. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously the concerns being highlighted with um, the recent decision on the Berghofer Stadium upgrades um, that would necessitate the demolition of a 131 year old tennis club and bowls club, mm -hmm. uh, which is a big deal. So you've touched briefly on that, you've already shared your perspective, but can we speak more broadly on the idea of what does that look like for the region moving forward, because we do need to make big decisions about development, about um, housing, about what what buildings do we demolish, what things do we work through. How do you maintain the rich traditions of the Toowoomba region while boldly pursuing the future and pursuing progress? Yeah, look, we've got a very large region, yeah. very large region. Um, I feel as though the CBD and that you know the, the immediate surrounds is chock a block. Yeah. It's chock a block. Like it used to take me ten minutes to get to work, it now takes me twenty. Like <laughs> I literally talk about traffic jams in the Toowoomba CBD, and people look at me like I'm a fool. But <laughs> it's true. It's a real thing. Yeah. Um, look, I think, but we do need to progress, and we need to understand that as a as a community, we are expanding. Where where our population is growing, uh, and we need to uh, embrace embrace um, uh you know, more building of more uh, infrastructure and, you know, sporting activities and all of that. But at the same time, at the back end, we've got to make sure we've got the water. We've got to make sure, you know, because you can build as many houses as you want and we're going to run out of water yeah. at the end of the day. Um, so I, I feel as though, but, but we need to make sure that we keep, you know, our legacies are so important around, you know, what makes this community what it is. And what makes this community what it is, is the community themselves, you know, like, you know, you know what I've done, what I've been involved in, and you know, particularly with my Christmas appeal that I run every year through through my employer, um, the the generosity of this community is absolutely remarkable, and that's what makes me proud to be part of this community. Mm. And I can sit here and say that to you because I'm running for council. I want to be a councillor, right? But you know that I mean that. Um, when I when I'm trying to get people to donate food, and I get seventeen thousand kilos of food in four weeks. 
That's the heart of this community. And we need to embrace that and we need to encourage it. And I think that's how we keep our, our, our traditions. Oh, thank you for that. Good perspective. Um, so in your view, um, should you be elected and serve a term or two on council, um, what are those core pillars that you'll be able to look back on and say that those are what made the Toowoomba region successful? Core pillars, uh, well, is that we, we try and keep the cost of living down as much as we can. Yeah. Um, and that, again, is an all level of government situation, right? It's not just local. Um, you know, that we're functioning as a city and that we're, we're moving ahead and we're, we're keeping our traditions alive <laughs> um, and, and that we're, um, we're embracing change um, and, we're, you know, we're welcoming new, uh, new developments and new, um, new, new, new members to our community. Like, you know, I think, I don't know the, the actual numbers, but I know during COVID, or certainly after COVID, Toowoomba just went bang because yeah. it, it all of a sudden became this amazing, incredible place to live. I mean, it always has been for 44 years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I think being able to maintain that is really important. Mm, yeah, thank you. Um, so it's just final question. If there was one thing that you could say to electors to secure their vote for you, mm. what would that be? Um, I, I am, I'm truly genuinely uh, in love with this town. Um, I, I feel as though it's a secret. It's almost like it's a little secret that we don't want to tell anyone about and we don't really want to tell them about it because they come here and they, and they love it and they want to stay. And great, that's really good, but at the same time, I want to keep it for myself. Um, but uh, no, look, I, I, I'm not a politician's politician. I'm a, I, I'd much rather be a representative of the people. Um, I don't want to play politics. I, I, I think it's poor. Um, I'd never attack a person. I might attack a policy. Or I might attack a, a comment. But I'd, I'd, I'd always keep the people out of it. Yeah. That's really, really imperative to having a functioning council. Is that we have healthy debate. That's really, really important. But never make it about the person. Yeah. Um, and uh, and I'm just genuine. I'm just I'm just a dad of four and a grandfather of two who lives in Wilsonton, you know, and <laughs> has a job. And you know, yeah. I'm I'm not I'm not special. I'm just typical Australian bloke that loves his city. Yeah, thank you that. Paul Wilson, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. All right, smashed it. Whew. Well done.